What is going on everyone? My name is Boyt and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology. The Titans action spawning in the bottom of the map in the red color playing as Loki. His name is Loki Roki Top 10, also known as Regulate. You may be aware of him if you watched a recent, uh, the recent game that I cast. Nope. Very, very insanely good Loki player. He's up against the Loki main himself, Gabu. We've got ourselves a, an Oasis game here. Gabu in the blue color playing Loki. Yes, this is the way that it goes. Uh, I'm going to say it. I already said it once, but I'm going to say it. This matchup is a coin flip. When you play Loki and you play against a Loki player, you are basically just saying, I'm a gambler. That's literally all you're saying. I'm a gambler. I'm going to walk into this game. I'm going to flip the coin. If it lands on heads, I win. If it lands on tails, I lose. If it lands on the side, maybe I have a little bit of chance there to influence the luck just a little bit. Uh, but it is, it is a, a very, very coin flippy matchup. There's several things that make it coin flippy, especially in the Norse War. We actually have been watching some of um, Soup's games recently, just randomly on his stream. And it's like, if in the Norse mirror, your opponent has the better hunt, like literally it's just a matter of like 10 to 20 seconds of hunt in the early, of walk time in the, in the early game, that can mean the difference between winning and losing a game. So that's the first coin flip. And that's with every single Norse war, it's going to be how far away is your secondary hunt from your first hunt compared to your opponent. So if we take a look over here, we can see that the zebra is here and it looks like the other zebra are on the other side. So it's fairly similar in time in terms of walking distance from one way to the other for both players. Uh, after that, the coin flip comes into uh, essentially how many iron here you get in the big fights. Because it's a mirror matchup. If you guys are playing in the exact same macro, because I would say you should have the, poten the potential to make the same amount of resources exactly the same. So the biggest influence in those, in those fights is going to be iron here. If you get an iron here, you win. If you don't get an iron here, you lose. If no one gets an iron here, then everybody is uh, very, very equal. Um, but obviously, maybe not obviously, the trolls, not really what you want to get. Trolls are kind of flipping a tails when you called heads. Um, and then the uh, the Valkyrie are kind of okay, because if you get a Valkyrie, you can pull it out of the fight and then go raid with it a little bit. But your opponent is effectively just getting free favor from the Valkyrie if they can, um, if they if they've got the the uh, the willpower to chase that down. Uh, so we'll see how this game is going to go. I am excited. I do like Loki mirrors. I think it's fun. There is another thing that can give you a slight advantage over some of the l the lower level Loki players, and that is early chain mail, early bronze mail, early uh, copper mail, early iron mail. If you get that upgrade, you might find yourself an advantage where that's concerned as well as we see an advanced time coming through Good here point. for loki roki top 10 very very shortly if we look over to kaboo's perspective here he's getting up his couple more dwarves out and he'll be advancing a little bit later as well so there is okay i mean there's a couple there's two different build orders right now for norse there is the dwarf first build order which i think is actually quite good and there is the standard build order where you go like three food and then you go over to to gold with two villages on food uh, and then you get your dwarves out i think both are completely fine i don't i think you probably get yourself maybe like 10 10 to 20 more gold total for the uh for the dwarf start i don't think it's that big of a difference you can advance really fast with the dwarf start with three uh with three ox carts but in the end, in the mirror, I don't think it matters advancing fast in this matchup as we see the temple over here. This is exactly what I talk about in, um, and I, I like the regulates doing this here. In the in the Norse mirror, in, in, in any mirror, the most important thing is uh, playing defensive. Uh, and, and what I mean by playing defensive is making sure that your resources are protected. Because your opponent, if he wants to come and attack you here, he the the only way that he can get an advantage here in the mirror is if he's got forward buildings on this on this position here to get a um to get a to get a, def a defender's advantage on that position, which obviously is not going to happen here because uh, regulates already over here on this location. The same too is basically true for Gabu. These temples in his base, though it's close enough over here. If regulate did chuck up a temple over here, he could 
basically equalize on this position, but your opponent has got villagers to throw into the madness, uh, which is a thing. So we'll see how the game's going to go. Longhouse coming down, no surprises where that's concerned. Longhouse coming down for uh, Loki Roki here. Uh, I don't I, I don't think that advancing fast in this matchup is very important. What's important is getting out the Hursa as soon as you possibly can. And on this map, both players had to walk quite far to their second hunt. So getting their Hursa out fast and then attacking was just not possible. So advancing fast here, not what was uh, necessary. As we're now going to see Gabu moving across the land here, trying to scout out everything and see what is uh, what is up. Skip. As he's going to walk in onto this position, looking around for something to do with his sort of villagers, just hanging out on that location over there, chopping the wood down, doing everything they can. We see a house coming up on this spot over yeah, here as Gabu is going to be moving in to start hacking away at this sandry tower, getting a little bit of favor here as a dwarf gets pulled off the uh, the gold line here. He wants to get a little bit involved in the uh, in the fight here as, uh, as Gabu is walking back and forth, doing what he can. Nice little pullback there from Regulate, though. And a little bit of damage done onto the uh, to the old uh, not the old cycle onto the Herso. This unit's going to be retreating back now. We're going to have a uh, little bit more of a party here. It's more Herso are coming through onto this location here, as we see the walls up over here nicely. We didn't finish the wall off, but these villagers are going to be very very happily safe on that location there. As the villager location here has been spotted. Population here: Gaboot, 52 population. Loki Roki 47 population here. As uh, we see the units now moving in. Houses coming up over onto this location. We've got ourselves some relics here, which aren't picked up just yet. Tower of Cestus, an extra uh, damage on the on the towers. We've got the Nose of Sphinx, extra building hit points, which is actually quite good. Now we've got four Hursa versus five Hursa. This is the uh, the true the true trademark of a very experienced Loki player is the ability to count how many Hursa you have. If you've got more Hursa than your opponent, you can fight. If you've got less, you can't fight. You got the same, you can fight. Kind of. Kind of. Teleport. That's all the fans is in for uh, for Loki Roki, and Gabu does notice that. He's waiting on his own uh, Hall of Fans here, I'm sure. There, it's coming through. And we'll see how things uh, will amount here after the gold tier. I like this play here from, from Loki Roki. Is he going to start going into. Um, no. I thought he might go straight into. into gatherers here instead of just pure pure dwarves once you get enough enough yeah. dwarves out that's enough to make yourself the battle bore in the heroic age you just want to go into gatherers here still we see husbandry yep husbandry comes through still no dwarves i still still no gatherers excuse me Gabu on the other hand he is uh he's very familiar with the dwarf only loki style the dwarf only loki style as the uh, as the Hursa coming in onto this position, the village is going to be retreating into the tower here. Is he to get out of here? He does get out of the tower there, gets garrisoned as uh, Gabu gets uh, a little bit of economic damage there as regular. He kind of needs to start putting some walls down onto this location. So the Hursa are going to be sneaking around on this spot, trying to pick off villagers here. There's a lot of damage that Gabu is suffering to do this, but he is turning around, getting some good uh, good uh, amounts of DPS done while the rest of these units are kind of out of position. However, Gabu, he's taken too much damage. He might even lose a Hursa. Yeah. Losing a Hursa is definitely not something you want to have happen there. As now a Valkyrie comes through for uh, Regulate. as that Hursa there. 4 HP remaining. The rest are going to be retreating back here. It seems they should be able to get back home. Nice and safe here to get uh, the the get onto the the healing Yo. spring. As you've got 85 population for Gabu, as regulates also at 84 population. So still very very close here. Uh, not really much much differences in this game. As the Hursa going to be moving up to the top side of the map. <laughs> we've, we've got Eric Woman Maker. I don't know what that means, but that that's the name. It is what it is. I don't know. Yo. Got 13, uh, 13 Hursa here for Loki. For Loki Roki. And plenty of Hursa here for Gabu. Gabu's got tons. It looks like an armor is going to come down in the next age. going to come through here. I'm not sure. I mean, there is there is a point to going to the Heroic Age fast. But I think that the first thing you want to do is get yourself that cop Copper Mail. If you're playing uh, uh, from f in this perspective. We see the, the Gabu armory is up. And he doesn't have copper mail just yet, but he's got the armory up to grab that when he gets the resources for it. As we Yo. do see a little bit of a catch out here 
from Gabu. He gets one Herso kill. First blood is drawn. And he gets an INER. Now, INER in this type of a spawn, it's not that it's not that uh it's not that important. It's really not that important, but in terms of uh in terms of overall, if he actually gets a fight now with the INER to, to blow the horn, it's gonna be really, really big. So we'll see how things are gonna go as uh, more military buildings coming up. Like you are going up through Bragi, still no still no copper mail in just yet. That's the hearse are gonna retreat back. So I haven't seen this this healing spring being thrown down just yet as the hearse are onto this location. Are you gonna start this fight ever so slightly? Bragi just just not quite in for Loki Rogue. He's gotta be a little bit careful about taking these fights. He's gonna retreat back through the wall. See a little bit of a fight going on over here as the Valkyrie's sitting back here trying to defend the Dwarves. going to be idle here. Troll spawn here for Loki. Roki's in a little bit of a trouble position here as he's pulling back. We do see the Hursa coming back in for Loki. Roki. Lots of gold in the bank as the Dwarves moving up onto this gold mine over here. Bragi is in. That's going to be a battle ball. That's going to be an extra little bit of HP onto the, the Hursa and damage. Whereas Gabu here still not advancing. He's just about to have the resources to advance. It's going to be about a minute behind regulate here as uh as regulates trying to hold on as best as he can Gabu with a big big advantage it would seem though moving forward in this game as the troll does get sniped down ever so slightly living it alive with 10 hp is actually a really smart move because it's not that useful of a unit here it's taking up population a uh, much needed population of uh of loki roki as he's starting to build more hersa not building any uh any hersa at his temple anymore just just have two long houses at this point. A little bit interesting. See how things are going to go. We see a second town center coming up for Gabu as he's going up through Bragi. I like that play. He's got some nice gold mines on this side to spam dwarves out. Go for the dwarf economy. Throw a market down. Buy food. Get to the Mythic Age off of the two town centers. Seems really, really strong here now. Loki Roki could do the same thing except off of one town center. Take advantage of that market first and have a, have a much better time moving forward in this game as the uh, Hursa coming in onto this position could be pulling him back ever so slightly, leading the town center up uh, or preventing the town center here actually as he's going to be retreating away. Surprised to see that. He's got a lot of Hursa over here just hanging out on that position as a longhouse is coming down. No town center for Gabu anymore. But what he can do is just go straight Mythic Age here. I think that's got to be the right play. Still no upgrades in terms of the Copper Mail here. So both players a little bit lackluster where that's concerned. It's definitely an upgrade to really, really be wanting in this matchup. As you see some walls coming up over here for Gabu. As Loki Roki just hanging on in this location. He gets his second town center. Unlike, unlike the town center for Gabu, I don't actually like this one too much for uh, re Regulate here. He has to come over onto this gold mine. Maybe you can bring one of those ox carts over here and just start spamming dwarves out of this one. Or just use it for population is just another option. He doesn't even have to build villages. It's a bit of a, a wild idea. As one troll does get sniped down, more longhouse is going to come up here for Loki Roki. Uh, as both players are just a little bit timid here in this game. Not really looking for a fight here just yet. As the Copper Mail does come through for Gobu. He's also got Copper Weapons as well. As Gobu is going very heavy on these upgrades. He's going to catch Regulate out here pretty bad. We still don't see the upgrades in. As the army pushing in, Gabu says, yes, it's time to go. As Flaming Weapons is getting clicked here. Regulate going to click Flaming Weapons as well. And we'll see how this fight's going to go. But Battle Ball spawn here for Loki Roki. Still nothing that important. No INER spawn just yet as the Hurst are trying to get uh, back here. More Battle Ball spawns on this location. Still not going to be able to compete with these upgrades, which Gabu's got. And Gabu gets a Mountain Giant. That's absolutely huge. But Regulate gets himself an INER. That's even better. We'll see if that's going to help out in this fight moving forward. Re Regulate's at 90 population. Gabu is probably sitting at 115 population. 110 population here as a Frost Giant comes in and those armory upgrades carry Gabu through this fight so heavily. Another frost giant out as well here for Gabu as more Hursa trying to pop in here but Gabu's just overpowering in this fight. Another INER here for Loki Roki but he just doesn't have the army to take advantage of it in this location anymore as the myth units will be able to tear down this town center and Gabu gets a solid advantage moving forward in this game as Regulate Needs to retreat back here. He's got himself his, his Hursa over here. They've got no armory upgrades retreating back. We see the Longhouse coming up onto this location as Gabu tries to get some good pressure in onto this one, but this is just like he's going to get sent back. No problems here. But Gabu kills the Town Center. Town Center gets zero value. 
That 700 extra resources in favor of Gaboo. There was no dwarves that came out of that town, so there barely any damage done to the, by the town center onto units because it was mostly targeting a battle ball or a myth unit for that entire fight here. As the uh, Ursa are going to be looking to get a little bit of a raid coming in. The only way back in these positions from Regulate's side is to get tons of economic damage done to his opponent. He needs to get 700 damage worth of economic dam of, of, of the economy lost in the town center, plus the extra damage done from the, the units that he lost so hard in that Yo. fight. We still don't see any armory upgrades. Starting to get some of those thrown axmas down. Uh, Gabu could probably also, yeah, you could go Mythic Age as he's going through hell. So Gabu's in a really, really strong position here. However, he is mass myth units at this point. So while he does have a handful of Herso Steel, he's basically math, mass myth units, which means uh, Loki Roki can actually win this next fight. Uh, if he decides to take it, because he's easily going to be able to kill off all of those myth units. He's also got some of those Dawn Axemen out here to help out, but uh, Loki Roki, I mean, he doesn't have a market here. He's got tons of villages on gold. He's, he's pushing in onto his opponent over here, trying to block off those Hursa that are over there, as it looks like Gaboo's going to be holding on here very, very easily. Not only that, there's going to be Gaboo uh, Fire Giant coming through very, very shortly, which are incredibly, incredibly strong here. As more throw on Axemen coming in onto this fight here, as Gaboo's got plenty of resources in the bank. The question is, how many military buildings does he have? He's got three, four military buildings, so he should be able to produce relatively well here. We'll see how this fight's going to go, as it does look like Regulate. Like I said, having the Hursa out against all those myth units, it's actually probably worth it to delete the myth units, in all honesty, from the Loki side of things after that fight because you want to just get Hursa out. You just want to get a whole bunch of Hursa out and, and and just continue to fight. And, and the, the myth units here just are not it. So you see a, a marker coming down now for Loki Roki, but kaboo has got the hell already in. These Hursa over here are going to get sniped down as the Hursa are going to be retreating back. We do see this battle ball getting cleaned up over on this location as well as the market just about up here for uh, Loki Roki. How many resources does he actually have here? He doesn't really have enough to buy his way to the Mythic Age. There, there has been some trading happening already here from the Gabu side of things, I would say, as the Nidhogg does get dropped down onto this location over here. We do not have any upgrades uh, for the Thrown Axemen. So they're not going to be able to get any bonus damage against the Nidhogg coming forward as Regulate realizes, yep, just got to retreat back to get to the Mythic Age himself and he, and he should be okay here as he does click up through Hell. He's finished up on the... Uh, on the goats here, he has to throw down some farms in a really, really difficult position as the town center is coming up onto this location. We see the Hursa are going to be coming through. You've got to be a little bit careful with fighting this because it's a Mythic Age Hursa, 182 HP uh, versus 169 HP plus the 11.2 damage versus the 10.4 damage there. As the uh, Thrown Axeman retreating back still doesn't have that upgrade, but it's coming through now at, um, what is it called, Axe of Muspel. As you do see some nice micro here from regulate as he's trying to stay alive in this game as best as he can throw an axe when retreating through this wall doing the the best that they possibly can as the uh battle ball is going to be cleaning up the, the long house over there town center on the way now for Gabu as he's trying his very best to get that one up. So he's throwing Axeman Micro here. It's, it's, he's trying. We will be seeing a fire giant coming out though for regulate so we should be okay. Moving forward in this one as the long house does get take uh, does get taken out over here. More Fire Giant coming in. Four Fire Giant for Gabu already out. That is going to be a very difficult thing to deal with here as Gabu is going to be searching around the map, still trying to be taking out the villagers that are hunting, that are gathering gold. We do see the dwarves moving all the way over here though, so they should be okay to be on that position there. As the Throne Axemen finally have their upgrade in as the Nidhogg is going to be uh, searching around for more dwarves here. But the town center looks like it will come up. Getting up to three town centers is, is very, very important here, but it looks like Gabu is saying, screw it, I'm going for the jugular here. Hell comes through now for... Hell comes through now for regulators. He does drop the Nidhogg down onto this location. You've got to be a little bit careful because the, the fire giants can actually clean this, this Nidhogg up fairly easily as that market's just about to go down. We do see the Nidhogg searching around. There is a gold mine over here. There are plenty of gold mines over on this location as well as the Nidhogg does move in here. Will it get to the town center in time? Answer is no. As the uh, more as more of these thrown axe been trying to chase down this Nidhogg, we do see the dwarves over here. We'll have to split those up a little bit if he wants to continue to mine. Uh, but we do see the Nidhogg, uh, whoop, Nidhogg gonna get some splash damage down here, not paying attention over here from Regulate's side of things. It's gonna be a lot of good damage done as the Fire Giant Hursa moving through. He can grab this town center for themselves, but it does look like Regulate's going for a little bit of a cheeky 
Uh, Cheeky just don't defend tactic, looking for as much damage as he possibly can here moving forward. But this means that Gabu is simply just going to be able to march in to regulate space and take that town center down while these dwarves are taking so much damage here. That Nidhogg is really not doing anything just yet as the village is going to be pulling away on this location. The Hursa coming in onto this spot, but it looks like Regulate's realizing he's got to get back home, but he's too far gone here. He's too far out of position as the town center is going to get absolutely torn down. Four fire giants, tons of Hursa here as the, uh, the town center is going to get cleaned up. We see the dwarves over here getting cleaned up as well as we do see the, the fire giant finally getting over here to help finish off this Nidhogg. It does a lot of damage to the Nidhogg. Uh, uh, it, it's possibly the best counter flying unit in the game in a way uh, with that basically they just it does hack damage against the flying units that have low hack armor and is a uh, does bonus damage versus myth units as well. It's such a strong unit here. Yeah, flying yeah. units. Definitely something to use when it comes down to it. As the town center is now up for Gabu, he's up to three town centers. Still more myth unit spawns here. As the Nidhogg's just going to fly away into the corner here. As we see a temple, more houses coming up for Regulate. He's doing his best to stay alive in this game, but I'm not sure exactly what he can do here. As uh, the fortified town center is coming through for, for uh regulate but Gabu's economy is big here his economic management has been fairly decent here making gatherers out as well he's already had his feed of dwarves this game plenty of villages on farms I mean this is these are very low-key farms you can throw up some farms here as well but very very low-key farms if uh if he if I do say so is the uh, so gonna try and sneak in onto the back here grab a couple of kills onto these fire giant nice play here from regulate as he does manage to get here trying to get a ghost building gets one snipe there he can retreat back here for just a little bit but this this town center is now getting targeted down as we see the battle boars here trying to deal with some hearse over here as the village is getting pulled off of the wood there to take on the hearse as best as they possibly can but these are mythic age hearse so they do not die fast at all we still only sitting at copper upgrades here for uh, for regulate as the nidhog now moving into the main base of gabu trying to take this down take down some farms it's actually a really good use of the nidhog in all honesty is to just target farms down he's got 40 crush damage so he can literally sit in here and just kill off farms in like a two shots or something like that uh, and do so much economic damage. It's actually something I haven't thought of before. I think it's actually probably the best, maybe the best usage of the Nidhogg. Yes, you take some damage from the uh, from the town center, but you just kill so much. As the uh, town center goes down and Regulate does realize he's out of gold and he's out of a chance here. As Gabu gets away with this one, takes the dub. Very nice play here. You have to ask yourself the question, what went wrong mostly for Loki Roki. And honestly, what went wrong for Loki Roki was just simply taking this yeah. fight. There was no reason to take this fight. Just allow the town center to go down and then you have yourself flaming weapons over your opponent who's used flaming weapons to kill off a town center. So that that was a, a big, big... Uh, I, I actually think it was a mistake from Gabu, but Regulate allowed that mistake to become a brilliancy in a way. It's like if you play chess and your opponent gives you a uh, gives you a bishop, but instead of taking that bishop, you then say, no, 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 you take my queen. Uh, and, and then Gabu says, happily, I will take your queen and I will keep my bishop and you will be losing this game. Uh, but had... Uh, had um, Loki Roki simply just said, no worries, that bishop is in an awful position now. I'm just going to retreat my queen back to this safety safety square. He would have had the queen there to uh, do everything later in the game and take a win. But uh, that's... Uh that's what we got. Anyways, GG, well played by Gabu. Solid game. If you guys enjoyed this one, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTube, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next game.